The unique design of Lisa Gaconstant Constant Supports is what put us on the map back in 1964. As you probably know, these are still the best constants in the business due to several reasons. The most important from a plant owner's point of view is the enormous range of load adjustability that can be done in the field. While the MSS spec calls for a minimum of 10% field load adjustability, Lisiga constants have a minimum of 40% adjustability and as much as 100% in both directions. This allows changing conditions, such as adding or removing a pump or a valve to the line, to be done without having to replace the support. Simply adjust the constant to the new load. And this video will show you how. In this video, we will show you how to change the load settings on a Lissiga constant hanger. It is sometimes necessary to make load adjustments in the field due to changing conditions. Please make all load adjustments with the approval and supervision of your responsible engineer on site. We have posted another YouTube video that shows you the proper steps to take for removing the travel blocks from a constant support. If you are adjusting the load at this time to remove the travel blocks, please be sure you have already taken the steps in the video titled Lissiga Constant Supports Removing the Travel Blocks. If you still need to adjust the load to remove the stops, then keep track of the changes you made so that you can return the spring to its original load once you have completed this task. Changing the load can be done either with the travel blocks in place or removed. This depends on your situation. Feel free to consult Lissiga if you have any questions prior to making any changes. Let's start by looking at the items that are important when changing the load the spring will apply. Look first at the nameplate for the information you need. The information is your type or your model number, the original calibrated load, and your hanger mark which is located at the bottom of the tag. This strip of aluminum is called the load scale. It has an X stamped into it across from the corresponding load on the scale. This X is the load that we set the constant to here at our facility. If you compare this to the calibrated load on your nameplate, they should match. The scale is a good reference to use as you're changing the load. It is not designed for great precision, but you can use it as a confirmation that you are going in the right direction as you change the load. These two sets of bolts here are called the load adjustment bolts. These are the bolts that we will be adjusting today. Always adjust these in alternating fashion so that this plate remains level. A few turns on one and then a few turns on the other until you get the desired load. Tighten these bolts will compress the main coil as shown in this picture. An increase in upward force the hanger is exerting on the system below. Conversely loosening the bolts will relax the main coil as shown in this picture and will decrease the force that the hanger is exerting on the piping system below. The Lissiga constants are so precise that we have made a table showing each constant load group and travel range. A copy of this table is available from Lissiga, so contact us and we'll email it to you. Using the table, you can calculate in advance how many turns of the bolt you will need to make to set the constant to the new load. For example, today we're adjusting an 1152 and the table you're seeing on the screen right now will tell you that each full turn of the bolt will change the load about 333 newtons or 75 pounds. Now let's go through a real life example and change the load. Here we have set up for you one of our type 1152s and I have calibrated the load to 2,225 pounds. Now, Let's say that we've added a valve to the line that this constant is on and the engineer has told me to set the new load to 2,975 pounds or 75, 750 pounds higher than the original load. I can look at the load scale to see about where 2,975 pounds is. This tells me that I need to move the load tube up 
which will further compress the main spring and increase the load. But to find exactly how many turns the load adjustment bolts I need to make, I can look at the load change table and do a little math. The load change table tells me that for an 1152, one full turn of the hex bolt is equivalent to about 75 pounds of change. I know I need to change the load by 750 pounds, so dividing 750 by 75, the math works out to about 10 full turns of the hex bolt. Now, if you follow these load adjustment bolts up inside the spring housing, you will find a lock nut on each one that is tightened against the load bar. Once you are ready to start, the first step is to loosen the lock nuts that are up inside the spring housing. They are right-handed threads, so loosen them as you would any other right-handed thread. Looking up at them from below, you would turn them counterclockwise to loosen them. Next, turn the load adjustment bolts in an alternating fashion, keeping this plate level until you have reached the desired load. Pneumatic tools here can be your friend, so allow me to demonstrate. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is break loose the locking nuts. So we go up in the housing. And then the other. And now it's time to adjust the load. And now we have adjusted the load on our constant support. Remember how important it is to make sure and to keep this plate level. That reduces friction on your constant support. Now, once you've adjusted the spring to the new load, snug the locking nuts and then check your load bolts to make sure they are locked in place. At this point you're done with the mechanical part of the job. The last thing you should do is to indicate the new load and date that you changed the load on the constant since it is now different than the calibrated load on the nameplate. Writing the date and the new load on the spring housing with a grease pencil or a paint marker is a good way to clarify the load change the spring is applying. We hope you found this video helpful, but if it hasn't answered all of your questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you, and be sure to look for our other how-to videos on YouTube if you need something else.